Welcome to God's Cathedral, the great and beautiful creation. This week we are celebrating how we care for God's creation and how we are invited to sing praise to God through our lips, through our caring for creation, and for our caring for one another. As we continue in this uh, virtual experience of being community together, I just want to remind you that almost every day we are sending out e-blast about the information that are pertinent to the life of the church. Also, we are doing our virtual Sunday school experiences. If you have not yet connected with a class and would like to connect with the class, please email me or Austin Lippert to get that information. You also will find that there is lots of uh, devotions coming up on our YouTube page as we continue to look forward to connecting with you through our Facebook and through other means of virtual communication. I invite you now to join me as we worship God together. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of God's salvation from day to day. Declare God's glory among the nations. The Creator's marvelous works among all the people. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. Alleluia. And now, if you would join us in this morning's opening prayer, let us pray. O oh God, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen, you place us in your creation, and you command us to care for it. Your works declare glory and splendor, and you call us to praise and reverence. Where we have degraded or destroyed the earth's bounty, forgive us. Where we have taken beauty and majesty for granted, have mercy upon us. Where we have become estranged from the creatures with whom we share the earth, grant us peace. Renew us in the waters of baptism. Refresh us with the winds of your spirit and sustain us with the bread of life. In the name of Jesus Christ and for the sake of the new creation we pray. Amen. Some people, in order to discover God, read books. But there is a great book, The Very Appearance of Created Things. Look above you, look below you, note it and read it. God, whom you want to discover, never wrote that book with ink. Instead, he set before your eyes the things he had made. Can you ask for a louder voice than that? Love all of God's creation, the whole of it, and every grain of sand. Love every leaf, every ray of God's light. Love the animals. Love the plants, love everything. If you love everything, you will soon perceive the divine mystery in things. Once you perceive it, you will begin to comprehend it better every day. And you will come at last to love the whole world with an all-embracing love. God writes the gospel, not in the Bible alone, but also in trees, in the flowers, clouds, stars. We are now God's stewards. We are indebted to God for all we have. We are not at liberty to use what God has lodged in our hands as we please, but as God pleases, who alone is the possessor of heaven and earth and the Lord of every creature. God entrusts us with this world's goods on this express condition that we use them only as our master's good 
and according to the particular directions which he has given us in his word. John Wesley. Reading about nature is fine, but if a person walks in the woods and listens carefully, he can learn more than what is in books, for they speak with the voice of God. Hear now these words from Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise him from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters in all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds. Kings of the earth and all people, princes and all the rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful. For the people of Israel who are close to him, praise the Lord. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. This morning we have heard a psalm as our scripture, Psalm 148. And it is a part of a quintet of hymns of praise, along with Psalms 146 through 150. What binds these psalms together into a quintet is that they all begin and end with a single phrase. Praise the Lord. In Hebrew, we know it as hallelujah, with the hallelujah part, meaning praise, and yah, referring to the Hebrew word Yahweh. In Greek, we know it as alleluia, but whether you say hallelujah or alleluia, it all means the same thing. Praise the Lord. We have recently been in the season of Lent, and for 40 days, we've journeyed with Jesus toward the cross. Historically in the church, we have removed the words hallelujah and alleluia from the liturgy during Lent. That is because Lent is meant to focus on mourning our sins and looking towards repentance. It is not necessarily a season of rejoicing and giving praise. But how wonderful it is that we are now in the season of Easter where we get to shout and proclaim hallelujah, alleluia, praise the Lord, Christ is risen. Last Sunday, we were together here online celebrating Resurrection Sunday. Some of us might refer to it as Easter Sunday, and that's okay, though it's a bit of a misnomer because Easter is not just one day, it is 50 days. And so that's 50 opportunities for us to give thanks to God and to say praise the Lord. But back to Psalm 148. It is one of those that begins and ends with that phrase, praise the Lord. It is a celebration of all of creation giving praise and thanks to God, and how wonderful it is that we get to hear this psalm so close to Earth Day. 
really, Psalm 148 should perhaps be the final psalm in the book of Psalms. It's not. Psalm 150 is. And Psalm 150 is wonderful in its call for everything that has breath to praise the Lord. Psalm 148 extends that call even farther. It doesn't have to do with the things that have breath. Everything is called to praise the Lord. From apple trees to ants, from water to wolves, from palm trees to people, every bit of creation is called to give thanks and praise. That tells us something about who God is, and that tells us something about who we are. What it says about our Creator God is that God was and is intentional about every aspect of creation. All of it is important. Everything is a gift. Everything around us reminds us of God's love. So what does it say about us? Well, Genesis and the creation story places humans at the head of creation, calling us to have dominion over everything. And while Psalm 148 is highly reminiscent of Genesis, Psalm 148 does not claim or proclaim humans as superior to any other part of creation. Rather, we are just as much a part of creation as the clouds and the streams and the rocks and the snails and the cows. We do, however, have a responsibility to live in harmony with all of creation. Though Genesis calls us to have dominion and leadership over creation, I might remind us that the best leaders take the lead from those who are in their care. And if we look around at that which is in our care, we see that it is praising God. If we look closely, we will discover that yes, even in the midst of crisis and pandemic, creation is giving thanks. While we humans are walking more and hopefully driving less, I believe that creation is giving thanks to God for this opportunity to breathe. If you listen closely, it's a sigh of relief. The air is clearer, the water is purer, the breeze is lighter, the spring blooms with trees of green and flowers in rainbows of color. The bird chirps are a little more cheerful and the frogs bellow in thanks. Spring always brings out a sense of renewal, but there is something different this year, isn't there? Something a little more joyful, even in the midst of pain and suffering. It's a blessing coming out of a curse, light breaking through the darkness, hope in the midst of deep concern, life despite death. It's all around us if we just step outside and look and listen, if we are still and present, if we open our ears and open our eyes. Creation is saying, praise God. We are called to join in creation's song of praise, adding our voices to the chorus singing all praise to God, our creator and our sustainer. So I have a question for you this morning. Will you join in? What part will you sing? Will you be in harmony with all of God's good and glorious gifts? How will you keep the song alive? And I end with this. May the gifts of all of creation, water and land, sea and sky, flower and trees, animals and people, may we all join together in unison to say, Hallelujah, Alleluia, praise the Lord. Amen. Let us pray together. Creator God, how wonderful are the works of your hands. The heavens declare your glory and the sky displays your handiwork. In your love, you have given us the power to behold the beauty of your world, robed in all its splendor. In your goodness, you have made us able to hear the music of the world. Your divine voice sings throughout creation. Give us bold voices that we might join in creation's song of praise. May our voices be in harmony with the wonders of this earth and in unity with one another through Christ Jesus and by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen.
Our God has created us to be stewards of creation. So go from this time of worship and adoration into a world that needs your caring touch as you love one another, as you love God, and you love all that God has made. Amen and amen.